Welcome back to Mobility at Work. I'm Hani and I'm your host for today's episode. This podcast is sponsored by Asper. Asper offers the most powerful, advanced and secure device management solutions for Android dedicated devices. Meet us to experience the magic of Asper at the Smart Nation Expo and Forum as the number B8148. All right, guys, today we are inviting a very special guest speaker from the main sponsor of this new season. Let's welcome Mr. Sudhir Raidi, a VP of Engineering from Asper. Hi, Mr. Raidi, it's great to have you here. How are you? It's great to be here. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you in, in our fabulous offices in Bangalore here. All right, all good. First of all, thank you so much for taking your time to talk in our podcast today. So as our today's episode, Mr. Reddy will be sharing insights on the DevOps and the Dev, DevSets Corps. What is it and why you should care as our topic for today. Before we proceed uh, to delve more on it, can you share a bit about your background and about Asper? It's, it's great to be here, honey. And I myself, I'm the Senior Vice President of Engineering at Asper. Uh, I've been at Esper for about a year now, a little less than a year. And before this, I was at a company called Chef, who was a pioneer of DevOps and DevSecOps. Uh, and I was the global VP of engineering there for about five years. So um, lots of great experiences with DevOps. Um, before that, I was at much larger companies. I was at uh, Intuit running their platform engineering for a while. So uh, all in all, I've been doing this for about over 25 years. And, uh, and coming to Esper, Esper is dedicated to making the DevOps motion come to dedicated devices. That's what our mission is, uh, and, and that's what we're out here to do. And that means automating everything for our customers and being able to enable them to push their software securely to all of the devices that, that they have out there. The Seasons of Mobility at Work podcast is sponsored by Asper. Please stay tuned for more content about managing your business with technologies with us. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mr. Sudhir, for a brief introduction of yourself. All right. So back to the topic that you are going to share with us today. I'm wondering what DevOps is. Can you explain to us more about DevOps? Yeah, that's a, a very interesting topic. And for, forgive me if I'm a little bit long-winded on this. It'll take a minute to explain this. So if you look at how the software de development and deployment to whether it is to the cloud or to devices is evolving, we went all the way from doing things waterfall to now being able to deliver software to production very rapidly in a matter of weeks or days or hours in, in many cases. And what DevOps brings is a mindset. It is, it is a mindset more than anything else that is surrounded by a certain set of tools and software that enable all of that. But it is a mindset of rapidly building software, gen generating the software that you need, and then deploying it to your devices or to your cloud and to your infrastructure as quickly as you need it, and then receiving that feedback and incorporating that back into the development cycle. So it's really the combination of engineering, development, and operations, which is once you've deployed the software, what happens to it and how does it behave? So if you bring those two together, it becomes DevOps. It used to be in the, in the past where development was one completely separate organization and operations was a completely separate organization. So bringing that all together is the, is the broad notion of DevOps. Now you'll hear about many tools and many different pieces of software that enable DevOps. And in there, there's things like CI and CD, continuous uh, integration and continuous deployment, which all enable this notion of DevOps, of bringing all of that together. And then there's a whole set of tooling around uh, all of that, that that we enable. Awesome, thank you so much. So learning about the DevOps, uh, um, I understand that DevOps has scale that it can also help us to keep with the demand of the digital innovation, right? And then there's also a connections among the DevOps and IoT. So, uh, Mr. Sudhir, how does the DevOps translate to devices and IoT? And why is it important now? That's a great question. First, the, the devices and IoT devices out there and what we call dedicated devices, which are really single purpose devices as opposed to your phone or your iPad where you watch uh, your kids watch movies, those are multi-purpose devices. Whereas now with IoT and these dedicated devices, think of the kiosks in airports or think of fitness bicycles or fitness mirrors or think of um, healthcare equipment that is, that is just there. It's a piece of equipment that is dedicated to doing one thing. 
that is becoming prevalent and pervasive in the market. Everybody's starting to use that and you see more and more use cases come in. So I'm going to do a shameless plug for a, a, a podcast that I run called There's a Device for That. And if you listen to that, uh, there are all these new creative ideas that entrepreneurs and creative people are coming up with on how to use devices in a dedicated manner to do things. Now, coming to your question, what Esper does and what is different between DevOps and, and bringing that to devices is really, if it is a multi-purpose device, there's somebody there that can respond to things. There's somebody there that can answer questions and, uh, and if a thing pops up on your screen. Whereas for dedicated devices, it all has to be seamless. It has to be, when you develop and deploy new software, it has to be able to uh, deploy that perfectly without taking any downtime with the system or without your device becoming unresponsive. One example I can give you is, um, think of a drone, a uh, drone that you use for either cameras or for military uh, reasons, you are able to update software on these devices as the drone is flying. You don't have to wait whether there's a security issue or whether there's a new feature you want to push to these devices. That's where the dedicated devices and IoT become really important in that they're working all the time, they're doing something all the time, and you want to be able to update software, the settings on the devices, and change things on the devices. That's what's important about uh, IoT, and that's what's slightly different about the traditional DevOps and what we're talking about with uh, devices. The Seasons of Mobility at Work podcast is sponsored by Asper. Please stay tuned for more content about managing your business with technologies with us. Right, good. So the DevOps proof its worth at the enterprise level. So uh, how have you seen customers to deploy DevOps at, uh, to their dedicated device fleets? Yeah, so we have a varied set of customers and we're very happy and our customers are some of the best customers out there that help us push the boundaries of DevOps as well. But um, I gave you some examples of this, but let me elaborate on some of them, right? If you take med tech, medical equipment that, for example, are used in, um, in trials at various uh, sites. So there's one of our customers who has their equipment that are doing trials on cancer research or doing trials on brain research, et cetera. And what they do is they have these devices that they, uh, that they manufacture or use a, use a third party to manufacture for them. And they have their own software that's running, whether it is doing sensors that are, that are, that are being used to, to gather telemetry from the patient and how they're doing, uh, et cetera. And these are mission critical uh, systems for them. So what, the, what we enable for them is now they have a new piece of software or new settings they need because the trial has changed in a certain way. Etc. We can help our customers push those um, push the uh, those settings and those new applications, all of them, over to those devices. Another use case is on fitness equipment. So everybody now has either a bike or a mirror or something or a treadmill uh, in their house that they use for fitness, and all of these have a screen on them that are connected to various sensors in the equipment that can gather information and that can help you become fit. Uh, again, these are devices that are deployed in, in various places. There's no one central place. It's distributed across the country, across the world in many cases. And what these co companies want to do is push new software, advertisements maybe. They want to push new advertisements to the de devices or they want to update the uh, physical equipment there or they want to stream information to these uh, systems. So all of these are becoming super important. Another case, I, I refer to the to uh, airplanes and drones a little bit. Another use case is devices on, um, on military equipment, right? Or, on, um, or where the rugged, uh, ruggedness is important to these customers. Again, these are all places where where not only companies are they, are they finding new things to do in these areas, but even the things that they used to do traditionally, which is really recall the device, bring it back to a warehouse or to a factory, and then send it back because they, that, that was the, we're taking all that away and saying, hey, all you need to do now is deploy with Esper, and you can actually automatically now get all of your software and settings and streams and whatever it is you want to do with that device, we enable all that for you. 
Okay, that was very, very good learning on DevOps. So uh, we already understand what DevOps is now and why is it important and how it could bring us benefits to our companies, right? So now let's take more on the DevScopes. So Mr. Sude, can you please uh, tell us what is uh, DevScopes? Yeah, so, um, so there's, what the what the entire software and in, um, and uh, solutions industries have evolved to is it started from these traditional ways of doing software to DevOps, which I explained about, which is really about bringing development and operations together. Now the next wave is really there's a lot of security concerns for any company out there, whether it is threat detection and elimination, or whether it's an active threat to the system that is in progress right now and whether it is uh, preventing future breaches and things from happening. All of these fall under the domain of security and compliance. What DevSecOps does is really bring the security aspect of, of software into the DevOps notion. So think about as you're developing software, as there are engineers working on writing the software, and then they submit the software into their systems, not only are the operational aspects of that software considered, but also the security aspects of that software. Now you can start doing um, the compliance scanning or uh, threat detections right up front as the code is being written so that you don't catch it later on. Now, one example there that I can give you is traditionally what companies have is they have this compliance list of things that they have to do. So your software has to be uh, a certain way and you have to use a certain version of a certain set of um, libraries and things because there are vulnerabilities in older versions, uh, etc. Now, traditionally how this was done is a development team would build software. They would then be, uh, get it to be ready for deployment. And then a security team would get involved to audit this piece of software. And then the a security team says, hey, there's these 65 vulnerabilities we found uh, and the engineering team and the security team spend a lot of time, oftentimes more time than it took to actually write the software. Uh, and then once the, it passes security audit, it can then go to production. Um, the notion of DevSecOps is to eliminate that last part of it and integrate your security operations right into the beginning and into your development uh, cycle. So what that does is makes your product more secure from the very beginning of the software development and then um, eliminates all of the cycles that are spent in making the software go through the security audits and things. So there was traditional software development, DevOps arose out of that in, to, in terms of the need for active uh, and rapid software deployments and rapid software development. And then security became the bottleneck and now you integrate security into your DevOps and it becomes DevSecOps where all of those are done within that. This is a topic that I'm very passionate about. DevSecOps is, uh, is, is probably the most time-saving things in the recent past that companies have uh, started adopting. And the more they adopt it, the more value they see out of this. All right, that's awesome. So what does this mean for product teams and why is it important for the end customers? Yeah, so um, product teams, that's a great question. I, I touched on a few of this earlier, but for product teams, there are two aspects to this. One is, it is a shift in how product teams develop software. It is a new way of doing things um, where they're used to traditionally just writing the software, throwing it over the wall to an operations team or to a security team, to where now operations and security have become part of that core software development process. It means upfront that your mindset has to change and you have to incorporate new processes and new thought processes in, in um, the development process. But once you get over the hurdle of actually implementing it for the first time, you then immediately see the benefits and the values of, of how this uh, works. Um, examples are, there are pieces of software that developers build that day and is deployed into production and could potentially hit tens of thousands of devices or screens or, uh, or browsers that night, right? That is how fast you can, you can get when you really adopt DevOps and DevSecOps in a really good way. The, it is a little bit of an overhead up front, for, up front for the development teams, but the dividends are huge as you go along. And now you're able to innovate faster. You're able to create new features or new products faster for your customers. For customers, the benefit here really is tremendous in that 
they are assured of a certain level of quality and a certain level of operational stability and a certain level of security that's already built into the software. So they can worry about what they need to innovate on uh, as opposed to worrying about is the software going to work or are there issues with the software or is it, is it secure enough for me and things. So their development cycle become rapid or they're uh, bringing their product, whatever innovation they're looking to do for their customers, bringing that in front of their customers becomes that much faster and that much more iterative so that they can get feedback and then they can bring it back to the thing. So on both sides, it's a win-win. Um, and the only, uh, only place where both customers and development teams, more so development teams, are is that it, they have to shift their mindset to do this and then implement products and practices around it that, that make it work. But once you're past that initial investment, the dividends are huge, as I said. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Sudhi, for your time to discuss about this with us. I believe that we all have gained more insights about this, both of DevOps and DevOpsCops uh, today, because uh, this topic is also quite new for us as well. That was an absolutely good sharing that we had for today. So I believe that this is the end of our sessions for today. So don't forget to check out our website, Sindas.biz, and follow us for, uh, on social media as well for more more content about managing your businesses with technologies. So I'm Honey and thank you everyone for listening today. Until next time. Thank you, Honey.